guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, Why Are Good Men So Hard to Find? And guys, this is yet another article written by a middle-aged woman. And when I say middle-aged, at a quick glance at her picture, I would say probably along the lines of 45 and up. So pretty close. Still middle-aged, I believe, technically, but she's getting up there, right? And basically, she's complaining and making the whole article out to be to be singing the blues because there's so many women in their 30s and all that want to settle down and be married and do all that, the family, but they can't because good men are hard to find. But in particular, men don't want to settle down now anymore because it's so easy, so easy for guys to have access to sex thanks to things like dating apps and attention from women on social media and all that, okay? And other things as well. And what's interesting about this, and total, which is total BS about this, by the way, is it isn't the guys that have it so easy thanks to dating apps like Tinder and other things like that and social media. It's the other way around, and we all know it. Thanks to dating apps and social media, women have the ability to get nonstop, 24-7, 365 days a year attention from guys, not just locally, but around the world all the time. And we know that what that has done, that all that attention and validation has done to so many women's egos, okay? And, but to make it out to be that guys benefit from that more than women is crazy, okay? Your average woman that is just a six, at best, you know, not too bad, kind of cute, you know, she can get tons of guys like that. She puts pictures of herself up on social media and dating apps and all that. But even a good-looking guy is not going to come close to getting the amount of attention, let alone offers, that just an average, ordinary girl is going to get. No comparison. But in this article, she makes it out to be that guys are the main uh, beneficiaries of things like that. It's it's crazy. I mean, what, what planet is she from here? Is this a parallel reality that she's in where everything's opposite from re real life here? So I'm going to go into this, guys. You're going to see what I'm talking about here. So starts off. Spend a little time with single women in their early to mid-30s, and you'll be grateful you're not one of them. The relationship scene is even more dismal today than when it was when I was their age. All the women want serious relationships that lead to marriage, but many of the men they meet do not. All too often, a woman moves in with some guy, hoping they're on the road to somewhere. Two years later, he tells her he's not ready for marriage and kids just yet. Splat. Well, probably the average guy that actually has some options and has, um, you know, some success and status and some self-worth, after two years of living with the same woman, can you blame him that he doesn't want to get married and have kids? Because essentially, when you move in with your girlfriend, it's pretty much like, uh, for all intents and purposes, it's already like you're married, okay? I, I've, I've lived with girlfriends. I know what this is all about. Trust me on this. And plenty of you guys have. And after the whole beginning where everything's supposed to be all magical and perfect, it's a pain in the ass, okay? There obviously are exceptions, but is in no way, shape, or form what you imagine it going into the situation because you think for the first time, oh, it'll be so great that we live together because we'll be so happy and we're having sex all the time and all that. It'll be fun. Wrong. You're not going to be ha hooking up as much as you once did. She's going to be there watching your every move all the time. She's going to be questioning where you're going. She's going to want your attention all the time. She's going to be nagging about stupid shit that when you're on your own, you're being nagged about, like leaving the toilet seat up, not taking out the trash on time. Just stupid little things. You guys that have done that know this. So is it any wonder that a guy lives with a gal for a couple of years and he's like, eh, I don't think so. She says, but wait, has online dating made, made the mating, mating market easier? Yes, for men. If you really want to hear a woman rant, just utter the word Tinder. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but if I'm not mistaken, a big chunk of the women that are actually on social media and dating apps are doing it purely for attention. Okay? They're doing it to help build their confidence, to get that attention and validation, their daily attention and validation, and make them feel special and feel beautiful and all that. But that's usually it. And then the other ones, they got it made because they got tons of thirsty guys after all the time that they could have like that. Your average guy on Tinder, do you think your average guy could just get a chick over like that on Tinder? No, it doesn't work that way. It's in the benefit of the woman. Okay, so I know what she's talking about here. Again, 
Maybe she's in a parallel universe where everything is opposite of what it is here. Single women are more equal and empowered than ever before. They have unparalleled sexual, reproductive, and economic autonomy. In many ways, they're doing much better than the men. Just look at the lopsided university graduation rates, <clears throat> which are now around 60-40. And yet, large numbers of young women admit their private lives are a sad mess. Well, who are you going to blame for that? Can, you know, when I screw up, when I do something wrong and I screw up, I'm going to take ownership of my fuck up. Okay, I'll admit what I did wrong. Okay, but the women that are complaining that they're alone in their 30s and is dismal and blah, 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 blah. I'm sure these same women had plenty of opportunities with great guys in their 20s, their teens and 20s, and even now in their 30s, if, if we're being honest here. But they're so picky. And where's that pickiness come from? The, all the attention and validation they get all the time from the dating apps. Okay? It's like if the guy isn't perfect on every level, next, next, because the mindset is there's an unlimited supply of guys for them. And of course, they spent their prime years turning down the good guys that were in their age age range for either older guys that were just having their fun and but are never going to settle down because they know better or riding the carousel with the bad boys, or focusing on career, as I've said many times before. But now they get to their 30s and assume it'll be just as easy. It's not. And a lot of guys in their 20s have been jerked around and mistreated. They're not going to settle anymore because they've learned better. And guess what? More and more guys are learning these things each and every single day. It's amazing how this community has grown so much in just one year, let alone over the years, and how things will grow even more in the coming years. But it's easier to assign blame on everybody else. She says, if you're a gender studies major, stop reading here. You're going to hate what I have got to say next. I don't like it much myself. Well, I am not a gender studies major, and I wouldn't be caught dead reading a gender studies book, even if you had a gun pointed at my head. In a nutshell, over the past few decades, the traditional relationship exchange has broken down. It used to be that men and women each had something the other really needed. Men needed access to sex. Women needed access to resources. Men couldn't get steady access to sex unless they had resources to offer, so they worked hard for them. The partnership between men and women was a grand bargain that usually left both sides better off. Are they saying that men are no longer working hard because a lot of men are realizing it's not worth it to me to get a to go to college and get a very very expensive degree that the cost benefit just doesn't isn't in our favor that means guys are lazy no that's bullshit for men sex was traditionally expensive the price tag was a long-term commitment to provide for a woman and children but today sex is cheap and that changes everything this is the premise of a bracing new book, Cheap Sex, by American sociologist Mark Regnerus. Sex got cheap because of three technological developments. The advent of the pill, which, which divorced fertility from sex, the onset of mass-produced, high-quality porn, and the arrival of online dating sites, which made it easier for men to find willing sex partners. Wait a second here. Again, if we're putting the blame on technology and men, those uh, dating sites, which you said makes it easy for guys to find willing sex partners, they wouldn't be able to find, they wouldn't be able to benefit from that if, guess what, there weren't the willing partners on those sites. And who are they? Let, let just, I'm just calling it out here. It's, it's, it's obvious, right? Sexual liberation is a fabulous thing in some ways. But it can also turn men into louts, because women don't expect much in return for access. Today, most men can have all the sex they want for very little cost. No fancy dinner required. The irony, as Mr. Regnerus writes, is that today's mating market is probably more dominated by men's interest than ever before. Again, guys couldn't benefit from all this, the few that do in terms of the percentage, if guess what? There weren't plenty of women willing to accommodate that. And again, who really benefits from all the, the dating sites and things like that? Women. They got made because, let's be honest here, I mean, like I've said before so many times, 
your average woman could on a Friday or Saturday night stand in front of a bar with a, a sign that says free pussy and she'll have a line three city blocks of guys like that right but a good looking guy that he 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 really presents himself well well dressed looks good confident very very you know he's the, he's he's the man could stand there with the same sign saying free dick and he's not going to get a whole lot of women he'll get some but not it's not going to compare so you know it's apples and oranges here you know but again she's making out to be that men are the prime beneficiaries of all these things no we know who really does so what is she talking about here when women complain that marriageable men sober steady good providers are harder to find than ever they may well be right the marriage rate is falling steadily especially among the lower middle class while long-term stable marriage is increasingly a privilege reserved for the better off a lot of women seem to have their acts together these days but a lot of men don't i think the greatest most astonishing fact that i am aware of in a social science right now is that women have been able to hear the labor market screaming out you need more education and men have not mit economics professor michael greenstone says in cheap sex well yes absolutely the stats show that more and more women are getting the advanced degrees and all that okay and men are as not men are not as much but men have good reason for that it doesn't make men lazy it doesn't make them stupid it's just quite simply we're we're choosing a different path that's all but I've told you countless times, guys, about status, women and status. And those different degrees are so important as terms of status, right? And you can't tell me there are women out there that if they had the choice between a guy that, let's just say, he had uh, not only a bachelor's degree, but also a master's degree. And he was making 90 grand a year. Okay, but he's got he's got those degrees, but he also has student loans he has to pay every single month versus a guy that pursued the option of a trade has no debt, but he makes 110 grand a year and no debt. In this day and age, your average woman is going to pick the guy that has makes less money, has all that debt, but has a degree versus the guy that makes more money and doesn't have any. And the, and the argument is, well, in time, he'll make more money. Well, maybe so, but he's still going to be weighed down by those debts. You see what I'm saying here? And the other guy can make more as well. It says here, what might explain this puzzling fact, men don't have to prove themselves as providers anymore. They can get all the sex they want anyway, including online porn, on demand, and that can make the real thing feel mildly disappointing. Ask any younger woman about men and porn, you'll get an earful. Well, that's not real real sex. That's, you know, entertainment and guys doing what they got to do. And many go that route. That's their business. But that's not the same thing as it being in real life here. Come on here. Like it or not, women, women have always been the gatekeepers for sex. Not because they don't like sex too, but because no matter what you learn in gender studies, men's sex drive is innately higher. This means it's up to us to make the rules. Why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? My father used to say. It drove me crazy when he said that. Now it's dawned to me that he was right. So she didn't want to hear that back when she was younger because he's speaking the truth and reality, but now she's starting to realize after many, many, many decades on this planet, Papa was right. Probably not a, it was kind of a bad idea to dismiss your father's wisdom here because he understands men and that type of thing. Since the women's cartel collapsed, women's bargaining power has seriously eroded. That's why so many single women hate Tinder, which has further commodified sex for the benefit of men. Women are just another consumer good in the shop window. Has this lady ever been on Tinder? Has she ever put herself up there? I mean, again, good luck, lady, because I've seen her picture, but still... If she went on it when it first came out, I'm sure she could probably get some guys if she did worked hard on uh, making herself look better physically and a, you know a little Photoshop here and there. Then she'd be able to see. But women are the big beneficiaries of the online stuff and especially Tinder, not guys. Okay, only a small percentage of guys that are naturally very good looking and good shape and good bodies. Top percentage can benefit really from these things, but most guys in general. No way. Percentage-wise, far more women benefit from online dating and sites like that than your average guy by a landslide. She says, continues on, It may take a village to raise a child, 
but it takes a village to raise a husband too. Get the hell out of here. <clears throat> and modern society has largely abdicated from the job. Good husband material doesn't occur naturally, but is instead the product in part of socialization, development, and social control, Mr. Regnerus writes. In the domain of sex and relationships, men will act as nobly as women collectively demand. Time to get our act together, ladies. If we don't, they won't either. So again, let us go back to the time period when women were in their teens and 20s, the general prime time for women. You expect me to believe that these same women in their 30s didn't have a lot of good guys that were interested in them? Your average woman, let's just say women that were six and up, you can't tell me that plenty, plenty of them had tons of guys all throughout that time period that were interested in them. But the reason that they didn't entertain those guys, didn't go for those guys, is because the idea that they can constantly do better. And where does that idea come from? Like I said before, the constant bombardment of attention and validation through social media and dating apps and other things as well. And of course, feminism, tell women they deserve everything and more, and all that. They get to their 30s, they're not as physically appealing as they were in their 20s and teens, and all of a sudden it's a lot harder, and now the blues are being sung, men are the bad guy because they don't want to settle down, but also in that time period, so many guys in their teens and 20s, when they were burned by the girls they liked, d dumped for the bad boys, you know, they learned, wait a second, by me doing, being the good guy here, by me being uh, kind and supportive and loyal and, and the, the nice guy and, and the marriage material guy, that got me nowhere. Huh, I'm going to start looking up information. What am I missing? They start doing research online. They start doing research on YouTube. And they start seeing channels popping up everywhere of different guys talking about these things, talking about reality. And they start getting an education. And after a few years, they realize there is no way. I'm getting married. There is no way I'm moving in with a girl. There is no way I'm going to be the Mr. Nice Guy anymore because look what happens. And this is what you got today. And it is going to continue on and on and on because guys are sick and tired of being second-class citizens, jerked around, treated like crap. And it's going to continue until there's some sort of a balancing act going on here. But in the meantime, like I said before, you're going to get more and more of articles and things like this popping up saying pretty much the same thing. And this just proves it. So guys, you're watching this now, keep educating yourselves. Keep learning about reality. Don't don't focus on your hopes and dreams and la-la land, how you want things to be. Learn about how things really are. Focus on yourself. Focus on your goals. Self-improvement always. And do what's best for you. And do not for a second ever fall into the trap of, of being, you know, t taking the blame for this type of crap. No way. It's your time. It's your life. You do what makes you happy. And do not get sucked in and fooled by a lot of these uh, women here making you out to be the bad guy or settling for something that you don't want to do. Being shamed into that. I don't want you to do that. So anyhow, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.